Hey, what's up guys? Coach Kyle here. And before we jump into this episode, if you're looking to feel your absolute best, get results through fitness, through training, through nutrition, and just feel absolutely incredible day to day, have the confidence you deserve, have that self-esteem boost and feel incredible with whatever you're wearing. All you have to do is send us a message with the keyword glow up to our Instagram, which is C-O-L-O-S-S-U-S-F-I-T, Colossus Fit, you'll see us there and make sure to send that message. We have three discounted spots for anyone who's looking to just reach that next level to glow up uh, through their fitness journey and we can't wait to help some of you awesome people. Now into the episode. What's going on everyone? Welcome to another episode of the Fit, Healthy and Most of All Happy Podcast. I'm your coach and host Josh here with his co-host and co-host KG and I'm in the house. And Kyle came up with this episode today. I am pumped. We got some killer tips. I can't say I knew what glow up was. Kyle's always saying he's on his glow up. So I assume it has something to do with that. So I guess a glow up is a is slang term used to describe a significant transformation, typically in physical appearance. And in this case, it's going to be mental wise i saw a post i was really inspired and i just think it's going to change a lot of people's lives if you have this list you write it down you can also click down below just to like take it and put into your notepad and make sure you're doing each thing day to day but i know it can definitely help a lot of you glow up especially mentally when i first saw it glow up just sounded like blow up to me and blow up can be either like really successful or that you're getting bigger so i wasn't sure what glow up was but even the definition here i googled it it says it's the process of turning yourself into a a better version of yourself and becoming more confident attractive and successful and i mean who's not going to get behind that and that's what we're all about so these tips are going to go a long way it's a really fun title a fun way to kind of kick this off and since we're talking this is a fit healthy and happy podcast so healthy health happiness like this all comes back to your mindset it's hard to be ha- happy healthy and fit if you're not in a good place of your mind. So our number one tip is to prioritize your well-being and yourself first. And we think there's a correct way to do this. Kyle sent me a really funny uh, reel the other day, and it was basically this guy doing sketch comedy, and he was basically pretending to be at the doctor, and the doctor said, okay, well, you have a heart issue, your liver's failing, and you have high blood pressure, and then the person's like, is that bad? And he's like, no, no, it's not a bad deal at all. Just make sure you love yourself for that process. And they're like, but can I do something? He's like, no, just love yourself. And it, like, obviously you wanna love yourself and care for yourself wherever you are, but if you've gotten yourself to a position that's not healthy, or you're doing something that isn't building you up or moving you in the right direction, you need to prioritize yourself, take care of that. If you're too stressed, you need to find a way to kind of work against that. If you're finding your health is failing or your happiness or you're just overwhelmed, like that is something you really need to do to make sure you're in a good place. And sometimes that's taking a step back. Maybe that's saying, I've been too busy, it's okay if I miss one workout this week, I'm gonna get caught up with everything else going on so I can get back at it next week at a better capacity. Or with this vacation, I'm gonna unload from some of my other responsibilities but just the same sometimes it can be taking a step forward as opposed to a step back and to say maybe i'm not doing enough maybe i'm not prioritizing my nutrition my health my fitness to actually be in a place where i can have more energy and feel better or prioritizing your sleep so the number one thing is really just making sure that you are prioritizing your well-being and that isn't just making excuses for yourself and just saying oh it's okay because i care about myself you should care about yourself enough to make action but i assume you're already on that because you're listening to this great podcast but that is number one Yeah, and we have a lot of great tips coming, so make sure to stay tuned here, especially right until the end, because they are going to change your life, and I can promise you that. But number two, just simple, I wanted to get out of the way, is just honestly exercising daily. Like what it does for your mindset, for your overall physical well-being, of course there's the physical benefits, but just mentally, studies over and over again have showed just how great it makes you feel, the dopamine release, uh, or sorry, the endorphin release, and just like everything taking place is just absolutely incredible. And I honestly, I can't remember the last time I didn't exercise in a day for at least 30 minutes. It's probably been a few years and just each time I get out there, even just as simple as it is, getting out for that sunrise walk or you know that morning walk, like as soon as you get up, like those 15, 20 minutes, it's nothing crazy, but it just can leave you feeling so incredible. We strength train five times a week at least, going out for bike rides. Like I just, I really recommend, it doesn't have to be three hours or four hours a day, but just getting consistent daily exercise Size, even if it's a rest day. I know a lot of people love to just do nothing and you never feel good doing that, at least for me personally speaking. But I will say, find a way to incorporate it in as a lifestyle and you will feel incredible and you'll just see your mindset change so much. And even just think of exercise as play, like even 
having a young son running around, even just seeing him playing, climbing, enjoying moving and interacting with the world and life kind of brought me back to like when you just play for fun and how easy exercise is when we're playing. We go out, we play volleyball in a league. We love it. We're active. You don't even think about exercising and running around, whereas sometimes a treadmill can be a little bit soul sucking. So if you're struggling to even just get in the habit of that, do things that are enjoyable to you. Go walk in your favorite neighborhood. Go walk in a forest, listen to great music, go dance somewhere. Like there's a lot of different ways you can approach exercise as well to make it more enjoyable. And just the same with the gym, finding a component of it that you like, that's more engaging. If you're into strength, get into that. If you really like getting good contractions and crazy burns, do that. Like there's so many different ways to really make this enjoyable and to put you in a better spot. The number three, which is a big one in my opinion, especially since we're talking about mental health, is to detoxify your social media. I love social media. I think like most people, it's a push-pull relationship, a love hate relationship. If you think about it, this is social media effectively, I guess a podcast is kind of close um, and you're learning, you're getting great content. I'd like to hope you're getting inspired. This is going to create more action in your life. It's going to compel you towards good things, but just the same, you can get social media that just the second you get bored, the second you get uncomfortable, you just dopamine, 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 something that could keep you up at night, dopamine of reels, of YouTube videos, of Instagram, of comparison to other people, to uh, like doctored realities, of like edited photos and unrealistic expectations. So there's two sides to it, but I'd really ask like who you're following. Does this person make you feel good or worse about yourself? And if someone makes you feel worse about yourself, like if David Goggins saying get outside and run, you're not running, that's probably an okay thing. But if someone like is just making you feel in fear and uncomfortable and whatever, like you should really reflect that if you're following sources that are really combative and make you feel horrible like people screaming at each other people breaking down like you really want to be careful what you consume because that can kind of become your reality and your understanding and when you're following all really motivational awesome people that's going to really rub off on you so that's a great tip in my opinion really analyzing your relationship with that and following the right pages yeah i know so many people who just you finish it and you do not feel good afterwards after just the scrolling and you know yeah you'll laugh a few times here and there but it just it never feels as good is like reading a book which we'll talk about after but number four is just go to bed early like honestly there's a i've heard people say this before like nothing good happens after insert time here it could be 8 p.m it could be 9 especially 10 as well but if you think about it usually your willpower is quite drained so you're not going to for some people for a lot of people i know they're not going to be doing things that are going to be benefiting them as much they might be you know eating some unhealthier foods uh going through the social media and watching these things that aren't really leveling them up and bringing them to be a better person as they would in the morning when you have unlimited willpower, when you have that extra hour or two, depending on your schedule and situation. But I'd say one of the greatest hacks is just trying to set a cutoff time, a bedtime, get to bed a little bit earlier. And then that way you can actually get up earlier, you know, before the sun or around the sun, depending on what time of year it is, and just spend that morning leveling up, doing all these things that help you out. And I know a lot of people who will stay up super late, just consuming and doing all these things. It's harder to get up in the morning and actually do that productive stuff and to do stuff that makes you feel good. So it's just one of those things that it just, if you get to bed a bit earlier, you wake up a bit earlier. I know for a lot of people, they'll feel so much better, especially mentally, and they'll set themselves up for success for the rest of the day. Easiest way to become a morning person is just to get to bed before and getting up early is just such a powerful, incredible thing, especially getting enough sleep, having that rest. It'll limit irritability. It'll give you more energy. It's just going to help you focus. And this is a big one. So don't downplay this. If you're neglecting your sleep, this is your call to be on top of it. And number five is just to really aim to eat mainly whole foods, drink more water and really ask is what you're consuming actually adding to your body and not taking away from it. We love the 80-20 rule, which means you eat about 80% whole, good, great sources, nutritious sources of food, then 20% fun things. That way you can still enjoy yourself. And maybe you'll get to that level, you'll be good with it. And you can say, I'm pretty happy eating really good, whole, healthy foods. I always say more of what you have is more of what you'll kind of desire to consume. If you're having sugar every night, it'll become like habit and your body's going to crave it. It's going to want it. Whereas when you eat really good whole sources of food that build you up and feel great in your stomach and energize you, you'll actually crave more of that and you'll be more comfortable with that being a standard. And then on the off days where maybe you have a 50-50 food day, it's not going to wear on you as much as someone who's having 50-50 every day. Then one day they have 100% unhealthy, 0% healthy. So even this habit is just an amazing thing. Always Always aim to do this. You'll get more bang for your buck, more food volume with less calories, and it's just such a great move. 
Awesome. And number six, you know, jump into the next one is expressing gratitude. And this is going to be different for each person. I know quite a few successful people who will send three to five people messages in the morning. It's on their to-do list and they'll say some sort of gratitude message and it leaves them feeling good for the day. And, uh, and that works for them. And that's awesome. For some people, it's just simply spending some time when they meditate or when they think, just thinking of all the things that you're grateful for. For some people, it's getting out on a piece of paper and just writing down three things, which is one of my favorite things to do. But I would just say like some sort of gratitude, like it's been said that you can't be grateful and angry at the same time. And if you do find a way to incorporate just giving off those great vibes, you know, gratitude, saying thank you, like showing some, you know, support to other people around you and just really make that a habit and add that into your routine. There's just no way to, for things not to come back to you in so many uh, amazing ways. So that's my biggest thing is just express gratitude. And I think it will go a long way for you a hundred percent. I've said it before, it's easy to be down on your situation and say, I don't have this car, I don't have this mansion of a house, I don't have this crazy job, I'm not, I don't look like I have the world's best body all the time. But you can flip that and even say like, I have shelter, I have food, I have water, I have friendships. Like when you really get down to it, there's always something to be thankful for. And the more you can switch that attitude of ingratitude towards gratitude, it just fills you up as a person. And it sounds cheesy, but it actually is a really good way to look at it, to look at what you have, aim for that glass half full, not half empty. And this can make a big difference in your mindset and can actually empower you to appreciate where you are and to do more and just to continue that gift of what you have. And then our next one, actually, what we'll be doing right after this is spend more time in nature. Get some sunlight, get in the water, get in the forest. We're gonna be going mountain biking, so we'll be in the forest, hitting the trails. Just being outside is one of the best feelings. I love the example of like dogs. When you have a dog inside, you let them outside, they light up, they like just become alive. Like it's absolutely crazy. And humans are very much the same way. When we're in bad weather, you're inside telling get outside, you just feel fresh. Like you can look up into the sky, you get fresh air blowing at you, you can see water, something like, just such an amazing feeling. And even getting vitamin D is such an important part for your system, obviously in a healthy amount, but this is such a big tip. Just get out there, spend more time outside, you will not regret it. Regret it. Even yesterday, I just, I was genuinely feeling pretty kind of just tired. Like it just wasn't feeling my best. Like yesterday afternoon, I was like, you know what? I'm going to get outside, drove to the water. It was about a four, four minute drive, which I'm very grateful for. See gratitude. And it just left me feeling so incredible being in nature, being by the water, being by other people. Like it just, it's just crazy. Like take a second to reflect on how great it makes you feel. Look at what's all around you. Be present. It'll go such a long way. Uh, but number eight is just decluttering your space. Um, I'm not sure. I'd, I'd honestly argue that every Every person feels better in a less cluttered space. Like if you get into a car and there's cups everywhere and there's stuff everywhere, it's going to take a toll on you. You're always going to be looking at that stuff. You're always going to be thinking, I have to get rid of that. I should do this. Like it's just, it takes a toll. And even myself, I've noticed personally, once again, just being present and noticing when my desk is a little unorganized or when things are just all over the place. Like it just, it, it's hard to feel productive. It's hard to feel great. Like it's always on the top of your head. You're always thinking about it. So I would say really making a habit of just always always keeping your space as tidy as possible to, to the level that makes you feel great and just turning it into a routine, just like always getting rid of stuff. And it's just one of the greatest things you can do. I, I honestly, if someone tried to argue and be like, I feel so much better with everything all over, it's like, I really don't think that they do, but uh, that's going to be one of my biggest things. And I hope that helps. Next up, we have read insightful books. I'm actually doing a book challenge this year. So 52 books in one year and I've been loving it. Every time I read a book, I just get thought cues. You draw parallels between your life. It motivates you to do more, think outside of the box. And one of the best things you can do is just read good books that inspire you. And if you hate reading, I understand some people don't like it. They don't have the time for it. At least do an audiobook. Even in your commute, you could actually probably finish 10 plus books a year by just listening to audiobooks as you drive and you can learn about anything that interests you. So this is a great way to really widen your horizons, be motivated for more, just spend that time reading some insightful books. And number 10 is just spending time alone, thinking or breathing. Of course, it's great to be surrounded by positive people, awesome people and all that other stuff. Um, but I will say definitely just spending time 
you know, just being present, as I was mentioning, thinking, breathing, all that stuff. Um, myself personally, I try to just make a habit of, you know, a couple times throughout the day. So the meditation in the morning from Wim Hof or whatever it is that I'm kind of feeling that morning. And then just later on, I just find it allows you to just be present with your thoughts, to think about things, to just like become clear on what's going on. And just life can be so busy where you're running around from one thing to another, go, 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 go. And you don't even have those few seconds. But when you find those few seconds to just sit there, it can help you just feel incredible, feel relaxed and feel ready for what's to come next in your life. There you have it. Those are our top tips for your mental glow up to feel your best, to be in an incredible place. And an awesome bonus too, is to have someone to hold you accountable to this, to have a coach on your side to see better results. So if you want to see results, message us on Instagram to at Colossus Fit, C-O-L-O-S-S-U-S-F-I-T. You will see pretty much our podcast thumbnail as our display picture. Hit us up there, shoot us a message saying glow up. And in 90 days, you're going to look like a whole new person. You're going to be at a new level of fitness, health, and happiness, more muscle, less fat. We can't wait to get you there.